Hello everyone. So for today's auto hotkey lesson, I wanted to show you guys the most useful script I've ever made in auto hotkey. Basically what it is, is an instant application switcher shortcut. And what's really cool about it is if you keep pressing the button, it will cycle through the windows of that type. So I keep hitting F1 and it cycles through those windows. And what's really cool is it will always go back to the most recently opened of that particular window group. And if I go to Chrome and I keep hitting the button, it alt tabs through all of the tabs. Ah, oh, so cool. So the code is relatively simple. I'm just gonna show you the simplest one. Uh, so here we have Premiere Pro. So basically what it's asking is, is Premiere Pro currently running? No? Okay, then run Premiere Pro. And also, activate Premiere Pro. And that's literally all that is involved with this particular shortcut. So in Auto Hotkey, this information is important, and this information is important. And what you do to get that info is um, you have to open up Windows Spy here. I have a fancy pants shortcut for that on my secondary keyboard, but never mind that for the moment. And you can see the Auto Hotkey class and the Auto Hotkey EXE right here at the very top. If you go to Explorer, you can see that the Auto Hotkey class is Cabinets W class, whatever that means. And the exe is explorer.exe. Uh, Word here is winword.exe, and the Auto Hotkey class is Opus app, whatever that means. So anyway, that's where I got the information. And you can see in here that that's the info I used to activate these various applications. So Premiere's is the simplest, but there's some more complex ones. I'm going to show you Chrome next. Okay, so here's the logic. If Chrome is not running, then run Chrome. Okay, that's easy. Now that Chrome is running, it checks to see if Chrome is active. And if it is active, it will send Control Tab. Because again, let's check that out here. Yeah, it will send Control Tab every time I press it. However, if Chrome is not active, it will activate Chrome. Oh, very simple. So basically it's step one, step two, step three. So very simple. But basically if you wanna tailor this to your own specific needs, you just need to replace these and these. That's very, very simple. So Explorer was the most difficult one to figure out and I had to use a combination of the AutoHotKey class and the AutoHotKey EXE in order to get it to work because basically Explorer is always running because it's your file system. So I had to be clever and I still don't remember exactly what it means when the EXE is running and the class is not or vice versa. So let's just go through the script on this one again. If the AutoHotKey class is not running, it will run explorer.exe. However, it's weird, Explorer is already running, but what this means is running in Explorer's window. Now that we have an Explorer window, it does this special thing, which is group add. Now, if you want, we can go and take a look at the AutoHotKey documentation. Let's see here, AutoHotKey, group add. You go in here and this is a special function that they made to allow you to make groups of windows. Now, what I've done is I've made a group called Terran Explorers <laughs> out of every single AutoHotKey class cabinet W class, which of course is Explorer. Is there an Explorer window active? No, okay, then activate an Explorer window. And it just so happens that because of the way that group add works, this allows you to activate the most recently activated one. This is the first thing that shows up when you press the button as right now. See, I don't understand why you don't need to use win activate bottom, but for some reason you don't, and that's just an alternative way of doing it if you don't have a group. <laughs> I don't know. So once you already have an Explorer window open and you press the button again, then this line is what happens and it will open them in the order of the most recent. Okay, so there's that. And then WinWord or Word uh, basically works the same way, except for some reason I used a different method of seeing if Word is open. And this is actually less... Excellent. It's three lines instead of two as I had before, but yeah, whatever. It checks to see if word is open. It will uh, add group Terran words and then activate those in the same way that you saw up here. So anyway, 
So anyway, I just wanted to explain kind of how that works so that you can tailor these scripts to your own specific use cases. And you can add however many applications you want to your script. So I only have four of them on my function keys right now, but I could use every single function key if I really wanted to and have applications on every single one. Now, the problem with that is that your function keys are now useless for all other tasks. And I don't like that because I like to use my function keys for various things. So this script that I'm showing you here is kind of a dummy, and it's not the script that I personally actually use. So the script that I use can be found in Windows Mod Various Functions, and I'm going to disable the other one now. Let's exit out of that one. And let's look in here. So I have it actually on Control Numpad 1, Control Numpad 2, Control Numpad 3, 4, and so on and so forth. But I used such odd key combinations because there's very little chance that these are going to be maps to anything in any of your programs. So unlike function keys 1 through 4, control numpad 1 through control numpad 4 are not really used for anything in any program. So I'm safe to use these as the keys that activate the actual scripts themselves. Now, I don't press these myself because that would be a very long distance between the control key and the numpad, and I'd have to use my left hand to go all the way over here. It'd be a real pain in the butt. No, no, no. Instead, I just have them all mapped to my macro keys down here. So this is control num6, control num3, control num2, control num1, and this one is F13, which uh, never mind exactly why. I wanted to have it be just one key because I'm doing experiments with this one but it could have been control numpad zero or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's completely arbitrary. The point is that I wanted to have these keys available on my left hand, because it's always sitting here. My left hand is always sitting here, and these keys are very easy to press just with my pinky or my ring finger very quickly. And that's the point, is that they're more accessible down here than they are even up here. Now for you, if you don't have a G15 keyboard, which you probably don't, you're probably gonna have to put them on the function keys, but that's just fine. You will no longer have F1 working as the help menu, as it does for many programs, but whatever, you don't need help, do you? You're perfectly mentally stable, probably, unless you're watching me, in which case, maybe you're not. <laughs> so before I started using keyboard shortcuts to do stuff, I actually would go down and manually click on every single application in order to switch to it. And this is incredibly stupid because you're using your mouse in the program, you're doing stuff, you gotta go all the way down here, click, and you gotta come all the way back up, do stuff, come all the way down here, click, go all the way back up, do stuff, go all the way down here. This wastes minutes of time per day. It really does. So I started using uh, Windows Key 1, Windows Key 2, Windows Key 3, and so on and so forth in order to switch between applications, and I had those maps to these keys down here. But the problem is, if you hit Win Key 1, it only opens the leftmost window of whatever that group of windows is. You see that? And then you have to actually keep holding down Windows Key and keep hitting 1 to go between, and it like shows, it's, it's weird. And then you let go, and then it actually opens that particular window. So let's do it for Word. Windows key 2, 2, 2, it goes to the third one. You see, that's really screwy. I don't like that. So now that I've found this new method of doing it, it's just so much better. I can go to Premiere. So I can just be working in Premiere and hit the Word key, and I have my script up right here. I can hit the Explorer key, and I can go grab a graphic, and then go back into Premiere, and then go back into Explorer, and it's just magnificent. This works really well. I think everyone should have this script and that's why I've made it and all of my other scripts publicly available for you to use however you like. So go ahead and try this. I've actually given it to the other people at the office and they are using it and they say that it's super great and so you too will find it to be super great. And until next time, I'm Taryn from Taryn Auto Hockey TV. I guess. Bye.